Hey there folks, geology professor Sean Wilsey here doing a short video to give you a little bit of information about a massive earthquake that took place within the last, uh, I guess, 12 hours or so. Uh, this was in Vanuatu, which is a small island nation in the South Pacific, about a thousand miles off the northwest coast of Australia. There are fatalities and injuries, so this is a quite sobering news event, but I thought I would share what little bit I've been able to piece together uh, look at the science, but we also want to look a little bit at the, the human aspect as well. So this was a magnitude 7.3 earthquake that occurred on December 17th at 1247 local time. So here's the location here, just off the coast of Australia. Well, not just, but, you know, a distance off the, co off the coast of Australia. Uh, this is a, a volcanic island arc. There's a subduction zone here between the indo Australian plate, which is pushing in this way to the northeast, and the Pacific plate. So this is a little string of volcanic islands right here. And you can see the big earthquake, the 7.3 here, and then all these circles here, which are mostly in the 5 to 4 range, are some of the aftershocks that have been felt so far. So this is still a developing story. Um, there was no significant tsunami associated with this earthquake so that was good news um, there was an initial warning but then that was later canceled when there wasn't a significant tsunami i think the what was produced was maybe 24 centimeters a little less than a foot um, and depth i think was 57 yeah 57 kilometers depth for this quake and what made this quake uh, particularly damaging was its proximity to uh, this island here and this is the capital city right here port villa so there was uh, quite a bit of people close by. And even though the depth was 57 kilometers, that was close enough to the surface and the size was significant enough that it caused quite a bit of damage. So let me first start with uh, some of the damage and maybe more the human aspect. And then we'll circle back to uh, a little bit more on the science. Um, right now, they've got a lot of the communications lines are severed, internet, uh, maybe some telephone lines. So again, information is kind of spotty, but here's, and I'll put links to all these. Uh, this is a, a video from, a, I guess, a, a garage a repair shop that shows just how strong the earthquake is. So I'll go ahead and play this for you. So you can see there just, I mean, this catches, I mean, just the, those initial waves. But I mean, the earthquake's still happening here, right? You can see things sliding around, this car rolling back and forth. Um, this car here is moving a little bit. So this earthquake lasted, very likely lasted. Here's a different shot, different view. The earthquake. I think that's about it. Yeah, this is sort of the aftermath here. So, oh, here's a different view here. Just showing you some of the, the severity with the shaking and such. So it lasted, it looks like tens of seconds for sure. Um, and this little clip here from the New York Times shows some of the, the damage. So this is the US Embassy in um, Vanuatu. And again, these pancake structures, just structures pancaking down onto the first floor, um, parking garages. So you can the see- Billabong building, one of the Chinese stores. And substantial CBS. damage here um, in this area. And so I've, undoubtedly this is gonna be a pretty big uh, search and rescue operation. There's probably still people trapped under some of these buildings that have pancaked down. Uh, right now they're reporting about 14 deaths 200 injured, but those numbers are, are likely to to go up as things come through. So uh, a pretty tragic and horrific scene there um, out of Vanuatu. Um, so yeah, not not good news there. But let's let's look at why this earthquake took place and um, maybe compare it a little bit here. So again, we have this uh, subduction zone right here. So this plate on the left, the Indo-Australian plate, is being pushed under or subducted beneath the Pacific plate. So on the Pacific plate side, you have a chain of volcanic islands. Uh, if you come in here close, you can make out some of these kind of volcanic structures and some of these islands. You can see a few over here. Um, let's maybe switch back to this view here. Uh, so that's the reason we had the earthquake. What's interesting about the earthquake in looking at some of the data um is the 
the beach ball, the fault plane solution, moment tensor solution, indicates this was a normal fault, an oblique normal fault. So it mainly went up and down, had a little bit of sideways motion, but as a subduction zone, you'd expect there to be reverse faults, compressional faults. Um, but sometimes, like like this with this earthquake here, we're actually getting extensional faults, normal faults, which is a little bit odd. But then if you actually think about as that one plate slides down beneath the other, uh, it has some flexure to it. it it's actually... Um, bending down as it goes down so you can get extensional stresses within that subducting plate and until we get some some in-depth analyses um, that might be one reason why we saw this showing up as a, a normal fault um, and let's run down here to the USGS uh, tectonic summary uh, 7.3 result of oblique normal faulting as we saw with the, the beach ball there um, Boundary between the Australian Pacific plates where the subducting Australia within the subducting Australian plate. So that makes sense that you'd actually see this thing extending and maybe as it's flexing as it's going downward. That's might might be why you get a, a normal fault there. Um, also, the depth of the quake, 57 kilometers, usually lets you know that that's the subducting plate that's producing the earthquake. That's where we see the biggest earthquakes versus the overlying plate. Um, earthquakes that occur within a subducting plate are termed intra-slab earthquakes. Um, in this region, the Australian plate moves east-northeast at about 85 millimeters per year relative to the Pacific plate, and it descends eastward beneath the Pacific at the Vanuatu Trench. This is one of the most seismically active areas in the world. Um, uh, this century, in the century leading up to today's quake, there were 24 earthquakes of magnitude seven or larger within 250 kilometers of this event. Um, so this is a big area for large earthquakes. So not a surprise at all to see an earthquake of this size. I think the last time, let's see, the last recorded earthquake in this region was a 7.9, um, about 86 kilometers southwest in December 1950. So they definitely see earthquakes of this size quite commonly um, in this area near Vanuatu. Of course, there's active volcanoes there as well. Um, the shake map doesn't have a whole lot to tell us just yet because if we go to let's go to this here um there's only been 34 responses so on uh, you know and then this is probably due to two big factors one well three one it was a very large earthquake two people are still trapped um they're dealing with life or death issues not worried about getting on the usgs website and and providing some data uh and then and then also this is a usgs site this isn't operated by the vanuatu government could be a language barrier, a little bit there. Um, and so lots of, and then their communication systems have been uh, compromised to some degree. So lots of reasons why we have limited data so far uh, for the shake map to tell us how intense the shaking was based on uh, people's perception. But the damage and some of the images coming out, I think uh, are, are pretty telling in that regard. Um, let's see, anything else here? There's like a, a fun little interactive map. Um, regional information, this just sort of shows us where historically the earthquakes have been uh, i think that's kind of all i want to cover with that so far um and then maybe to compare this one we've had you know i've done actually done several earthquake videos in the last month or so and so i thought it might be instructive to compare this quake in terms of its size to uh two other quakes that i reported on recently both u.s quakes um and I was doing this by hand and like, you know, figuring out the difference in the strength. It's a pretty simple formula. Uh, but then I stumbled upon the USGS actually has a fun little calculator. So I'll put this in the video description as well. If you want to compare any two earthquakes. So in this case, I've put 7.3 in here. So that's today's earthquake. Let me make that a little bit bigger for you there. Uh, and then let's compare it first of all to a 7.0. That would be the Northern California quake from a few weeks ago. And so we hit calculate. Um, and it says the difference between these two magnitudes is 0.3, which you probably could figure out already, just the mathematical difference. Um, and then a magnitude 7.3 earthquake is basically 1.995, about two times bigger than a magnitude 7. But in terms of strength or energy released, so this is amplitude, but in terms of energy released, because it's a logarithmic scale, it's almost three times stronger. So today's earthquake in Vanuatu was about three times bigger than the earthquake we had in Northern California a few weeks ago. Or in other words, it takes three of those Northern California quakes all put together in a bottle to equal one of these Vanuatu quakes. And if we compare it to um, 
The other quake I've reported on over the last few weeks or so, that's 5.8 in western Nevada near Yarrington. If we go ahead and calculate that difference, um, in terms of amplitude, it's about 31 times bigger. But in terms of strength, let's zoom in on that. That's, that's a huge number. Energy release, 170, let's round that up, 178 times stronger. So today's Vanuatu quake was about 178 times stronger in terms of the amount of seismic energy it released than that 5.8 in, in Nevada, which caught plenty of people's attention. And so uh, I'm not minimizing these quakes or their effects, but I mean, let's let's make sure we, we have a good handle on, you know, when we go up just even like 0.1 on this magnitude scale, the difference in energy release and the strength of the earthquake um, moves up exponentially. It's an exponential scale. So, so I'll put that in the video description if that's something you're interested in. But I just wanted to do a quick video to update you on this uh, this, this tragic event, and we'll hope for uh, a lot of humanitarian aid and um, hopefully not as many casualties as there might be otherwise in this area here. But you can see again how close. Uh, here's the epicenter out here. And then this is Port Villa, the, the capital area here. So thankfully, not a large tsunami was generated by this, probably because it was a quake a, a, it within, within the slab. It wasn't at the surface where it could displace a lot of water. It was a fault within the actual crustal slab, tectonic slab that was being pushed down uh, beneath the Pacific plate. So a uh, quick video again, just to update you on this. Thanks for your support of the channel. Thanks for uh, watching and learning with me. Appreciate you. Hope you're doing well. And we'll hope for the best for our good friends there in this part of the South Pacific. Take care.